Good everyone, today is the second video in our series on measuring the weather at home. Today I want to talk to you about wind speed and we're going to make an anemometer, I'll put it up here. To make our anemometer, which I'm going to struggle to say all day, we're going to need four cups. We want these to be as light as possible, so paper or plastic. We need two straws and a needle. We need a pencil with an eraser in the end, a ruler, a marker and some tape. I'm also going to use a little bit of super glue. This is optional, you can just use the tape instead. I think glue is going to make it a little bit easier for one of the parts. To get started, the first thing we need to do is find the midpoint of our straws. So I'm simply going to use my ruler and my marker to mark where the middle of my straws is. Mine are just under 20 centimetres. So the midpoint is just below 10. Now that I know where the midpoint is, I'm going to slightly flatten my straws at the midpoint. So I've got a little bit more surface area, because here's where I'm going to use my glue. But you could use tape instead. I'm going to stick them in this X-shaped pattern. Now that I've got my straws glued together in the X-shaped pattern, or you can use the tape to stick them together, it's time to attach our cups to each end. We need to attach our cups in a pattern that they're always going to be catching the wind as it spins around. So, I'm going to attach them, if they don't all roll away, I'm going to attach them like this, using some of the tape. And you want to make sure that they're stuck on really well, because if this is going to be in the wind, we don't want one of the cups coming flying off as it's spinning around. So make sure you use plenty of tape to stick them on. Another thing that can help with this is slightly squashing the end of each straw so they're a little bit flatter and giving you a little bit more surface area. Now in a moment we're going to rig our anemometer up and have it start spinning. We're going to want to count the number of revolutions. That's going to be really hard when it's all the same colour like this. So here's where I'm going to use my marker. I'm going to colour in one of the sides of the straw so that I can see every time it goes around. Alternatively, you could use a different coloured cup or put a sticker on or anything like that as long as you can count how many times it's spinning when it's spinning quite quickly in the wind. Finally, we need to get our needle or pin and put it through the middle of our straws, so right where the cross is. Now be really careful here not to get your fingers. And when you first put it through, the straws probably won't spin very well. There'll probably be quite a bit of resistance. You need to just wiggle around the pin or the needle a little bit to make that hole a little bit bigger so that it spins freely. You might even need to stick it through from the other side and wiggle around a little bit as well. You'll know that you've got it right when you can hold the pin at the bottom and the straws spin freely. Next, we grab our pencil with the eraser on the end and we're going to insert the pin into the eraser. And there we have our complete anemometer. What we're going to do now is take this outside and stick it in the ground or stick it up on a post somewhere where it's going to catch the wind and watch it start to spin. Now we want to count how many revolutions, so how many times it spins around in one minute. That's why I made the mark so I can see how many times it goes around. Now if it's a really gentle breeze day it might only spin a couple of times in a minute. If it's really windy where you are on the day it might spin a lot of times. But we want to count how many revolutions it does in one minute because we're going to use that to calculate our wind speed. There's not a huge amount of science to explain in this one. The wind's getting caught in the cups and spinning them around but we do have a bit of maths to figure out what that actually means in terms of wind speed. The first thing we need to know is how far a cup's travelling when it does one complete circle. And to do that we're going to use the equation of diameter times pi. Now earlier I used my ruler and I know my straws are, I'm going to go with 20 centimetres just to make it a little bit easier. Times pi. Now I'm going to round up here and go with 3.14. And I'm also going to convert my measurement of centimetres to metres, so I know how many metres it goes by. It'll make things a bit easier at the end. So 20 centimetres is 0.2 metres times 3.14, and that gives me 0.63, rounded up. 
which means that each time one full revolution happens, it's traveled 63 centimeters or 0.63 of a meter. Now, I know that when I was counting, it spun around 30 times in one minute. So the next thing I need to do is times that circumference, the 0.63, by the number of revolutions, which was 30. So 0.63 by 30 gives me 18.84. Again, rounding. So every minute, my wind, or my cups, are traveling 18.84 meters. So that's per minute. Now I need to calculate that up for an hour. So I'll times that number by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And that gives me 1130.4. So my cups are traveling 1130.4 meters every hour if the wind speed's staying the same. Now to turn that into kilometers per hour, I need to divide meters by a thousand, which gives me 1.13. So I've got a very gentle wind speed today of 1.13 kilometers per hour. On faster days, you might see your cups tearing around really quickly and it might be a bit harder to um, actually count the revolutions. On a calmer day, they might barely be moving at all. But this is a fun way that you can measure wind at home. So far, we've learned about air pressure and created a barometer. And today we've looked at wind speed creating an anemometer, which I've finally figured out how to pronounce. Next time we're going to look at temperature. I hope to see you then.